I came to Cramond, I was really keen to get excellent learning teaching across my entire school. That's everyone's aim as a head teacher. But for me, it wasn't just about what they knew, but more important is how they know it, how do they show it. And it's those key skills without being trite about it, about I don't want a checklist of skills, but the skill of I want my children to leave me articulate, resilient, capable of making decisions for themselves, being able to cooperate, to interact, to cope when things don't go well, to compromise. And for me, those skills can't be taught in a single isolated lesson or a series of lessons. They have to be inbuilt to their everyday experience in school. Um, so the, the nursery angle kind of came in a little bit later in my journey. But when I came in, I had a real lead with primary ones um, and looking at the learning environments across the school. Um, for me, I wanted, we had three teachers in primary one, we had a team teaching situation going on and 60 children and they already had some really good practice going on. But I looked at the learning spaces and what I really wanted was to echo the nurture in nursery. Um, so we started by looking at how we organised our P1 intake. So we went to three groups of 20 and each teacher had a nominated nurture group um, that was their home group for registration, for milk time, for snack time. Um, they reported to the parents, but thereafter they worked collaboratively as a team. And that's something since 2012 we've really developed across the whole school teachers work collaboratively together, they plan together, but they also work with each other's children. I was quite taken by the fact that um, when I was organising for my first year group to go to school camp, that organising the dorms, they didn't know each other in another classroom because they were in 7A and 7B, they didn't know the children. I was like, that's a lost opportunity of friendships, of shared interests. So we looked at how we could build you know, across school learning and inter-age learning with shared interests, which weren't dependent on age or gender. Um, so as we were in tandem, when we were looking at developing learning environments within the school, in primary one, we created a, a room, a space that became our play zone, and it became part of our rotations of activities. Um, there were some great things going on, where play had a much higher pre prominence in the daily life of each child, particularly in primary one and two. Over the years that developed for us to question, were we organising play to suit the teaching? rather than actually the real essence of what makes a high quality learning experience in early years, where you don't cut across things to say, now we're doing the important stuff, come to my teaching group. What you were doing was lovely, but stop and come and join me. Um, and that as teachers where we like to be organised, we like to be in control, it's hard where I found my nursery placements when I was a student quite difficult because I was thinking I wanted everyone to come and do my activity. I didn't want to just watch them and if they walked away, I'd be quite hurt. I was like, oh, come back. But what we basically did over time was we really had lots more chances to talk about what learning is and what are the key skills. So one of the things from the Shirley Clark's works that we looked at as a school was picking out these skills of resilience, independence, cooperation, creativity, and how do we measure it, but also more importantly, how do we provide it for our children in a natural way? So in tandem with that, we looked at providing, particularly we looked in primary one and primary two initially, um, was breakout spaces where children could go and create and explore that wasn't as teacher directed. And we slowly weaned ourselves off as teachers of being in control and saying, make your picture look like mine or make anything beginning with puh, because we happen to be doing puh and having to use paint brushes to make a puh. Whereas we actually said, well, actually, we want them to create here. This is a skill. It's using imagination and creativity. So if they don't make a puh picture, that's not what we're assessing at this point. We're not assessing their knowledge of puh. That's a teaching task somewhere else.